Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Mary if you're new here. Happy April. It's crazy how fast time has flown and I'm very sorry that literally my last upload was my March wrap no, my February wrap up and today we'll be doing my March wrap up. I am also filming a vlog, a reading vlog right now that will go up after this video and I will go into more depth about March <laughs> in that video. Long story short, I had a major reading slump practically most of March other than when I went on a spontaneous trip to Mexico where I read, I think, five of the six books that I read in March. Uh, yeah, not great. So I only read six books in March, which is very low for me. Usually I'm around 10 plus books, so that's almost half of what I typically read. Without further ado, we'll just talk about these books, grab a drink. I got this cute new mug from the dollar store or glass and it has these strawberries on it and I just have my greens in here. That's why it's a very ugly color. And my little turtle <laughs> um, straw. I've got five of these six books here and we'll just go in chronological order of the order that I read them in. Okay, the first book that I finished in March was Anne Patchett's Tom Lake. I actually tandemly read this and listened to the audiobook. The audiobook is magnificent. It is read by Meryl Streep and I think she did a fantastic job. So if you don't have the book, I would definitely recommend listening to the audiobook because it was great. And it is kind of a great premise to have as an audiobook. It's basically a mother telling her daughters the story of her youth when she had a stint in acting and where she dated an actor who is super, super, super popular. I absolutely adored the storytelling in this book and Patchett is slowly becoming one of my new favorite authors. I believe her writing is magnificent. It is so beautiful. It is not like flowery um, and poetic, but it is kind of very easy to understand, very seamless sentences, but they do just blow you away the way that the things are phrased and the way that the story goes along. I also read These Precious Days, which was a kind of short story collection or like maybe kind of essay collection. And that was also so beautifully written. So I just highly recommend anything written by Anne Patchett. I'm going to slowly go through her backlog and backlist of books because she has quite a few. But yeah, Tom Lake, it was just beautifully written. I gave this four and a half stars. I loved the story. I loved the romance, but I also loved the family aspect and the three sisters. And uh, it was just great overall. Yeah, I really don't have many bad things to say about this book. And the cover is so beautiful. I literally bought this because I love the cover so much. And I was like, it's Anne Patchett. I'll probably like it. But I am so happy that I ended up reading it and loving it. The next book that I read and finished in March was The Setup by Lizzie Dent. This one, I think I'm going to give it three stars. Um, I wasn't the biggest fan of it. The main character, Mara, she's very astrological obsessed to the point where it's like what she does and how she operates day to day is based on her, um, what is it called? What is it called? Where you like read your astrological thing every single day where it says like I'm a Libra so be like Libra today you will have a great day so she would read her thing <laughs> I can't think of the word and if it was bad then she would have a bad day if it was good then she would have a good day so she kind of operates that way and I did not like that at all I found that she did not have a lot of character growth throughout the book so she goes to a psychic and the psychic tells her very soon she's gonna meet like her the man of her dreams and then the psychic goes into labor so she leaves and uh, Mara has to lock up the psychic's office but then a man comes in saying like can you give me my like a reading and she was like this is the man that this psychic was telling about so she pretends to be a psychic and basically tells the guy that her 
or his dream girl is named Mara and then they're gonna meet at this bar at this specific day and then she goes back home she has a new roommate and basically has this whole plan to turn herself into a new woman by that date when she's gonna go meet this guy again but then obviously the new roommate and her kind of become really good friends end up becoming lovers but yeah I don't know so the roommate Ash I did like him I just feel like we didn't get to know him that well and the character development by the end of the book I feel like there was none and yeah wasn't the biggest fan so now that I'm thinking about it I don't know if this is really three stars maybe it's like a two and a half I don't know if I would recommend it it was like cute in some aspects but I don't know I have more books by Lizzie Dent so maybe I will like her books we'll see i have the swedish revenge i believe it's called so we'll give her a second chance if i don't like the swedish revenge i probably won't read any more of lizzie dent in the future the next book i read i can't believe i finally read it i gave it five stars it is one of my most anticipated reads since i read the second book in the trilogy last year in mexico so if you've been here for a while you will know what i'm talking about but I finally read The Winners by Frederick Bachman. This brick of a book that is covered in sunscreen, I need to like wipe it down with something. And the, the book is so like stained from the sun, it's crazy. But this is the final in the Beartown series. And once we booked our tickets to Mexico, I was like, okay, I think it's time for me to read this book. I read Us Against You last year in Mexico and it really like this book just reminds me of that trip. So then I was like, okay, I know the winners is crazy big. It's going to be heavy. It's going to take a lot of space in my luggage, but I need to read it. So I read it while I was in Mexico and man, oh man, is this book so good. It's slow. I would say it's like the slowest in the series. He really drags out the story, but I loved every single sentence in this book. I was not bored at all. I was just absorbed in this atmosphere, absorbed in this world. And I was just like, you kind of know what's going to happen by the end in the beginning of the story, but you're not prepared for it. You are not prepared for it. The last hundred pages, I am not kidding when I say... I was sobbing at the beach. I had my sunglasses on and I had just tears pouring out. My boyfriend was like, are you okay? And I was like, no, I'm not okay. And for the rest of the day, I literally couldn't think about anything else other than this book. I won't say it put me in a bad mood, but it, man, I was so sad. And I, I would say this book wraps up so beautifully, but it just hurts it hurts so much i highly recommend frederick bachman in general but if you want to start a new series that is fiction i'm not going into the plot about this book obviously because it is the last book in the series but it is about a small town in canada called bear town where hockey is all that they live and breathe for it takes over everyone's lives it takes over politics it takes over everything and a tragedy hits the town that includes hockey and you kind of follow along the turmoil that happens afterwards and then that's what happens in book one and then book two and three it just goes on from there yeah loved it loved it loved it will never ever stop recommending first of all the Barrytown series but second of all Frederick Bachman in general he is like probably my top favorite author at this moment in time next was a bit of a disappointment and I don't know if it's because I read this after the winners or if it just means that the book sucked but I read The Husband's Secret by Leanne Moriarty my boyfriend bought me this for the trip to Mexico it is kind of like a domestic thriller mystery you kind of within the first hundred pages you figure out what the big reveal is and then the rest of the book talks about like what the characters do with the information that they're provided and yeah I just didn't like it I didn't really like the 
mystery itself. I thought it was quite obvious right away about who did what and what happened. And I didn't like the characters that much. I was not invested. I don't know. Was not a fan. I gave this two and a half stars. The writing was okay. It is a very old book. I think it's like over 10 years old now. So I don't know if it's also has to do with that because I feel like mystery and thrillers have gone a long way and that's a genre that is very specific to time frames in history like I tried reading the girl with the dragon tattoo last year I hated it but like at that time when that book came out everyone was obsessed with it because I just think there wasn't anything better at that time so I think this is one of those books where it was fantastic when it came out, but compared to the thrillers and mysteries that I've read in this present time in the past few years, this is not very comparable at all. The next book I read, I read on the plane ride and airport stay back home from Mexico because our flight was delayed five hours. And it was honestly, I'm totally faking it by Amanda Gambill. This is the cover. I will put it somewhere here. So I basically read this in one sitting and I devoured it. I gave it four stars. I don't think it's a five star read, but it was so fun. It is a fake dating romance between a girl named Rach, who is like a personal assistant who becomes the personal assistant to this kind of political icon <laughs> named Press or Preston and they have an instant where people think that they're dating and because of that they start fake dating to kind of keep up the tabloids and keep up Preston's kind of image because it was actually good for him because he's very like stoic very serious and this is kind of um people seeing him in a more personal limelight and yeah I think it was so cute it was such a fast read I just wasn't really obsessed with the storyline and the characters themselves but I think it was really cute and it was definitely like the perfect book for me to read at that moment because I was so miserable being at the airport uh, <laughs> waiting for my flight and this kind of just took me out of that transported me into another world and I literally finished it within like 20 minutes before we landed. And last but not least, I read The Cheat Sheet by Sarah Adams. I wanted to pick this up because she has a second book. I don't know if this is a series, but she has a second book following one of the uh, side male characters in this book. Um, so that book is actually coming out this week. So I wanted to read this one to kind of prepare myself for that because I read Sarah Adams, um, the first book and the second book. I don't know what that series is called. I think, I don't know if it's called Rome or something. So I read those two books last year and loved them. And so I wanted to read more of Sarah Adams's backlist. And so I picked up the cheat sheet at a book sale and I just haven't read it. So I finally picked it up. I love this. So it is also another fake dating romance but this is between like two best friends since high school who have loved each other since high school but are too scared to admit it and now they're in adulthood where he is an NFL football player and she is a ex-dancer and has a dance studio where she teaches kind of like uh underprivileged children who can't afford um to pay for a proper dance studio so you follow along them fake dating and then eventually admitting their feelings and dating for real it is a closed door romance so no really spice and yeah i really like this i gave this four stars i i wouldn't say i loved it as much as practice makes perfect um but i think it's pretty equal to when in rome um yeah i just really liked it i just feel like it's such a short book but i felt like it was dragging on um them being like oh my god i don't think that he or she loves me but she also or he also is giving me signals but i don't want to ruin our friendship it just kind of dragged on a little bit too much 
So that I didn't love, but other than that, I really enjoyed this and I cannot wait for the second book. Lastly, I had my first official DNF of this year and I DNF'd Cry About It by Maggie Gates. Um, it is not really a popular book on Goodreads. It only has 530 ratings and 141 reviews. But my friend found it on a subreddit and was like, let's read this together. It is like she is a electronic bowl writer, topless by night and um she kind of works for this like family farm by day and then the male main character in the story his name is Vaughn and he is like the oldest brother of that family farm but he is not really in the picture but he does come back into the picture and it's between them. I DNF this 70% of the way through. I don't even know how I lasted that long. It is enemies to lovers but the they are so rude to each other to the point where I'm like, this is not fun, goofy enemies. Like this is just straight up very rude, evil <laughs> talk. I was like, I don't, I can't root for you guys. And they were still so rude to each other, probably up to the 50% mark. And then I just flipped to lovey dubby. And I was like, no, this isn't the, w like if a man said the things that this man said to me, no way like that's not happening so that i dnf'd should have dnf'd it earlier that was a mess but yeah those were all the books that i read in march i literally did not read one book that it was on my march tbr so that's good hopefully april is a better month april is an insanely busy month for me personally i have five birthdays in my family in april and a couple different events in april so Every single week, I have something I'm planning for, baking for, doing something for. So I don't know how much reading we're going to be doing in April, but hopefully we can get some audiobooks in so that I can at least do that while I'm doing all of these other things for these events. Thank you all. If you are still here <laughs> at the end of this video, thank you all for watching. I hope you had a fantastic March. Let me know what you read in the comments below and let's hope for a fantastic april and q2 of the year i can't believe we're already in q2 it is insane all right i will talk to you all very very soon and happy reading bye lazy sunday mornings hiding under covers i don't mind staying in with you Play your favorite movie, laying right beside me. I don't mind when it's just a